All right, let's get started. But first off, if you actually think you can sharpen an image the same way you adjust a lens on a camera in the real world, you're living in the dream world of the impossible. We can't really sharpen images, we just make them look sharper. And now that I've depressed you, let's sharpen an image. Go to the word file on the pull down menu and go down to Browse and Bridge. And you will notice that we have four images that are exactly the same. What we're going to do in this lesson is look at sharpening the same image using four different techniques. And at the end of the chapter, I'll let you decide which one is the best. This one's for you. We're not going to work on that one. Once we get done, try playing around with that one. See what you can do. Open up Blur 4A. There are probably a dozen ways to fix an image in this program, and there are dozens of more ways on the internet where people claim they have the perfect way to fix an image. I look for two things when I sharpen an image. Number one, I know there's a lot of ways. So I ask the question, which one is the visually best to use? Which one's really going to look like it's sharp? I don't care if it takes three days. Which one's the best? Number two, if there are three or four ways that might actually produce the same result, which one of the three or four would be the best and be the fastest? So I'm looking for speed and I'm looking for quality. Quality comes first, though. Look at it this way. Most digital images would benefit from a little bit of sharpening. So there's nothing wrong with doing a little bit. If you look at this image, let's go ahead and zoom in, say, in this area here. I would call her my main character at this market scene. She is a little bit out of focus, not a lot. The background is more out of focus because the f-stop that it was taken at. I like to sharpen it up just a little bit. A couple of things we should do before we start is number one, go up to the word image on the pull-down menu, go to mode and make sure you're in 16-bit channels. That'll help us because it's more information for the sharpen filter to work with. Come over here into layers and make a copy of that background. We can do that with Control J. That's the easiest way. And you got a copy. Why? Oh, I just like to do that so I can see before and after, see if I like it or not. With that done, we're ready to go. Go up to the word filter on the pull down menu and go down to guess what? Sharpen. And select Smart Sharpen. Some filters don't work in 16 bit, but we're lucky this one does. As you can see, there's a lot of options here. Let's go through some of these. Number one, you got a preview button. And that's nice because we can see the preview up here. Turn it on and off, see if we like it. Understand something else about working on a computer. If you think it's a little bit too sharp, it might not be when you print it. And that's the nature of looking at pixels as opposed to mixing inks. And it's experience that kind of tells you what to do. Like the preview button, though. Basic and advanced. We'll talk about advanced later. Let's just stick to basic right now. You have a default setting right here. Defaults is what it opens up to the first time. But let's say you're working in Smart Sharpen and you come up with an idea. I mean, it's an accident, whatever it is, and you've come up with a fantastic way to fix an image. Just the right amount, just the right radius, just the right remove option. And it's like, whoa, this is fantastic. I've got to save these numbers. You can click right here and give it a good name like Fantastic Sharpening. Click OK, and it will be in that list the next time you need it. That's nice. What's amount, Andy? Amount sets the amount of sharpening, which I guess makes sense, but it does it this way. Higher values will increase the contrast between the edge pixels and will make it look sharper. What's an edge pixel? Here are our edge pixels. The side of her dress to the background. The flowers and all the patterns. All the edges. The edge of her hair against the background. Her glasses against her face. Those are all edges. Smart Sharpen finds those. But the amount says, okay, now that I've found it, how much can I tweak that contrast to make it look sharper? The more you go with the amount, the more phony it's going to look. What's radius? Radius determines the number of pixels. Okay, I know your edge, and I know how much I can change the contrast. How many pixels on either side of that edge can I now use to fix this image? The higher the radius, the more halos you're going to get. Right, so those are those settings. Remove. You got three. Gaussian blur, lens blur, and motion blur. Let's look at each one one at a time real quick. Here's Gaussian blur. Think about Gaussian blur as viewing an image from an out-of-focus lens. It's probably a good illustration visually. If your image is consistently soft, no areas of sharpness, this option might work for you. It's not my favorite of the three 
But if you've got that kind of Gaussian, everything has got the same problem blur, this image doesn't. It has areas that are sharper and more out of focus. A Gaussian is more of a universal kind of application. It will work. This is my favorite one, lens blur. Now it's similar, but different. It's similar to Gaussian blur, but it's different in this way. It's not as soft. And what this will do is when it removes the areas and it finds the edge pixels, it will help to keep those edges distinct and not create obvious halos. That's the best of those two to use. The third one's in a league all of its own. It's called motion blur. You've got a photograph, but the lens was open and you move the camera, creating that streak blurred look. If you can get the angle down here to match the angle of the blur in the image, this thing does a pretty good bang on job of fixing it up for you. Not too bad. We're going to go to lens for what we want to do. One more thing, more accurate. Most computers are pretty fast today, but Smart Sharpen is very CPU intensive. And if you're working in this filter and things are going slow, turn that off, but leave it on before you click OK. Let's go ahead and turn it on. I'm not going to have any problem with this image. I don't think you will either. We'll leave it on. Let's start with the mount. We need more contrast between our edges. And so we begin running this up to the right. And as we do, you can see artifacts begin coming up on her face and background. That's the nature of sharpening in many cases. The problem is it's trying to sharpen everything. If we increase the radius, again, the more we increase the radius, as you can see, we're overdoing it now just to prove a point. But if you look at her dress, especially her dress, look at the flowers. Let me turn off preview. See how different they look? They do look sharper. But that's way too much. Let's take that down to about a 1.5. Remember, sharpening must be subtle, or it's not going to work. It's going to look phony. Let's go ahead and crank the amount up a little bit more. I have no problem going up pretty high with this. And every once in a while, we'll turn the preview back on and off. Now, you will notice you can see those artifacts, but don't forget we have this image blown up pretty big. If it's printed at normal size, it's possible you won't see those things. And that's an experiment, again, you're going to have to make on your own. But it is actually sharpening the image. Let's say we like that. What are the advanced features, Andy? Well, advanced features have shadows and highlights. Each one has the same options. Fade amount, tonal width, and radius. Fade amount adjusts the amount of sharpening in the highlight or shadow areas, depending on the tab you have selected. Remember, you're not increasing them, you're decreasing them. You're saying, I don't want that much in my shadow areas or my highlights. Tonal width controls the range of tones in the shadow or highlight. So you can soften it up a little bit if you increase that number. And it's kind of hard to see, but she's getting a little bit softer in some of those artifacts on her face. And of course, radius controls the size of the area on the edges based on shadow or highlight. So you could use those options too. Let's say we think we like this. We click OK. We come over here, take it back down to normal size. If we turn off this one, or turn it back on again. You can see there's not a whole lot. It's not that obvious. And if it has to be, then it's not going to work. But especially I like what it did to her dress. It really did a pretty good job of creating a more sharp image in the areas that I wanted it to do. Now we're going to compare this one to three other methods. So let's do this. Go up the word file on the pull down menu and go down to save as. Leave the original. Save as, put it in the same work folder if you can. And we'll call this 4A and just tack on the end of that test. That'll be 4A test. Go ahead and click Save. All right, let's close this one out. Let's go on to the next lesson.